Hi everyone, we are going to do another G main exam question. This is limiting reactant and looking at mole fraction. It comes from the August 27, 2021, three to six o'clock exam. Let's read the prompt together. So question 13, it says when 88 grams of propane reacts with 640 grams of oxygen, then find the mole fraction of the CO2 in the resultant gas mixture. So I made a recipe list of how I would solve this. First, I'm thinking, okay, what's the limiting reactant? Number one. Number two, I'm going to make sure I identify the amount of gas products that are formed by that limiting reactant. Now notice the CO2 is a gas and the H2O is a liquid. So for the mole fraction, because they want the mole fraction of the gaseous mixture, I don't have to worry about finding out the amount of that H2O that's going to be produced. It's only the gases, so only the CO2 product that I'm going to be looking at on the product site. Uh, number three, I need to find the amount of excess reactant that's a gas. So I notice both of those reactants are gases. Once I find the excess reactant, I'll need to figure out how much of that gas is left over. Because once this reacts, the limiting reactant is consumed, I'm going to have a excess gas from the reactant and then the gas from the product. And that's the mixture. That's the mixture of the gases. Uh, the last thing, we'll just do the mole fraction at the very, very end. So let's start with our limiting reactant. Uh, I took my 80 grams of the propane and I converted it to moles of CO2. Now the reason why I stopped at moles is that mole fraction, uh, that equation is just moles of CO2 over total moles. So I didn't bring it all the way to mass. I just stopped at moles since that's all we need in this particular problem. Now a little side note, I uh, took this to the CO2. I know that some people like to find limiting reactant by comparing the two reactants. You're welcome to do that. And if that makes sense, please do it. I don't do that. I find that um, maybe only 10 to 20% of my students can really do that effectively. And it's because you have to think. <laughs> Uh, I try and think as little as possible, and I try to minimize the thinking of my students. Um, so I always have students just pick one product. In this case, it's going to be the gas product um, of how much will be produced if we consume all 88 grams of that propane. And then I ask the same question. Well, what if I can consume all 640 grams of the O2, how much CO2 will be produced? Um, so I convert that from grams to moles. There are five moles of oxygen for every three moles, oh, excuse me, for every three moles of CO2. Miss my little carbon there. There we go on the CO2, uh, which means if we consume all 640 grams, it will produce 12 moles of CO2. Now we step back and say, okay, which one's on the limiting reactant? Well, you can't make any more than the smallest amount. Uh, so the limiting reactant is going to be the propane since it produced the smallest amount. That's going to be the amount of CO2 that will be made. So I'm going to label this up here. Once I identify limiting reactant, um, I label it. So propane's limiting reactant, oxygen is going to be the excess. So step back, big principle here. All of that propane will be consumed. When it's consumed, it will produce the six moles of the CO2. And then we're going to have some O2 left over that's just floating in this reaction. So we need to now do step three, which is figure out the amount of O2. Now notice, as I did this, we took care of both steps one and two, found the limiting reactant and found how much CO2 was, uh, would be produced. So now step three, we got to figure out how much of this O2 is left over, how much gas is going to be sitting in that container. Uh, so for this, let's do a stoichiometry to figure out how much O2 we're going to use. So 88 grams of propane, convert that to moles. One mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen. We are going to use really close to 10 moles of O2. We're going to use 10 moles of O2. Um, then I have to think, well, how many moles of O2 did I start with? I know the grams, but I need to know the moles. So we'll take our 640 moles of, o, or excuse me, grams of O2, just use molar mass, go from grams to moles. We initially begin with 20 moles. So really easy math right here. If I start with 20 moles of O2, I use 10 moles of O2, we will have 10 moles of O2 in excess. So now we can finally go to this last step, finish off the question and determine what the mole fraction is. So again, just a reminder, mole fraction is 
the moles of your particular substance divided by total moles. In our situation, it's moles of the CO2 divided by the total moles in this resultant reaction. And remember, we have two gases left over. I have the O2 that was in excess, and then we produce the CO2. Um, so we had six moles of CO2 divided by total moles is going to be the six moles plus the 10 moles of O2 left over. So we have 16 moles total of gases in this container, six of which come from the O2. Six divided by 16, there is your mole fraction. It is the 0 0.375. Um, so the fraction of all of the gases inside this container, about 37% of it belongs to the CO2. Nice, well done. Uh, I will post uh, some little links if you feel like you need some more support, some other videos on this. Good work, have a good day.